another GameCube installment, and since I'm going in chronological order, today's video is all about Mario Party 5. Honestly, this one's my least favorite Mario Party for the GameCube, but I still love it a lot because of the fun boards and modes and even funner minigames. Which is why we're here, since today, I'm counting down my top 10 favorite Mario Party 5 minigames. Same rules as always, concept matters for my choices, and it's just my opinion and no one else's. I'm speaking for myself only. Alright, I have nothing left to say for this intro, so let's party. Kicking off this list is Free For All Hotel Goomba. All four players are in a hotel with three floors, and each one's got a different amount of Goombas. To proceed to the next floor, they must punch them out of their way. However, they can't just punch willy-nilly. They must punch them in certain places to avoid being trapped in. However, if they do end up trapping themselves in, they can reset the floor and start over, although doing so can give opponents a huge lead, so I still recommend trying to get it right the first time. The first player to make it past all three floors is the winner. This minigame is quite fun and has a very clever concept. I've also always liked puzzle games. With that, Hotel Goomba has a luxury room, reserved for 10th place. Ninth place is free for all, Pushy Penguins. All four players are on a glacier near the water, which several penguins will run across. The players must run through these penguins to avoid falling in the water, since if that happens, they're eliminated. Any player still on the glacier after 30 seconds wins the minigame. All players can really do is run, and try to find openings in the penguin wall. There are also some giant penguins, which are harder to avoid, making things harder for the players. This minigame is extremely fun and thrilling, with a pretty clever and even funny concept. Sorry, that's all I can say for this minigame. Pushy Penguins pushes all the way from 9th place. And I suggest you push a time-killing epilogue my way, or I'll have to push you. Fifth place is the final boss battle, Frightmare. Bowser has several trials lined up for the player. In the first one, he or she must defeat several Mecha Koopas by stomping them, throwing them, or throwing them into each other. They can also breathe fire to cause the player damage. Next, there will be three fire rings, which move and change size over time. The player must dodge them by jumping over them, since touching them causes damage. After that, Bowser will enter the arena and try to attack the player by jumping around, cracking the tile he lands on. Getting hit by him causes damage. Once Bowser lands on the same tile twice, the fourth and final trial will begin. Bowser will grow huge and launch several attacks, such as meteorites, fire breath, and energy blasts. However, to damage Bowser, the player must utilize these. Once the meteorites are hit with the fire breath, they will turn into magic orbs, which he or she must throw at Bowser. Doing so five times results in victory, while being hit ten times throughout all four trials results in defeat. This minigame is extremely fun and thrilling. So much, in fact, that I'll guess you expected it to be number one. Again, what makes Mario Party fun are playing with others and short, simple minigames. So I can't rank this minigame any higher than 5th, but it certainly earns it, that's for sure. Coming in at 7th place is 1v3, Tube It or Lose It. All four players are snow tubing, although the lone player's tube is special. It's bigger and has spikes all over it. He or she must use it to run into the team players and pop their tubes. Any team player whose tube is popped is eliminated, and if all team players get eliminated, the lone player wins. However, if at least one team player reaches the end of the course, the team wins. All players can move around, although the team players move much faster than the lone player. However, as a trade-off, there are obstacles throughout the course, which can interfere with team players, while the lone player can smash right through them, what with the spikes. This minigame is fun and quite thrilling, and I can happily be either a team player or the lone player. When it comes to 7th place, 2 bit or lose it does not lose.
Sixth place is Free For All Flower Shower. Two newlywed Koopas will throw a bouquet of flowers in the air, causing several flowers to fall in a field, which the players must run around and collect. Pink flowers are worth one point, and gold flowers are worth three points. The player with the most points after 30 seconds is the winner. Although the amount of flowers is unlimited, players should go for the ones nearest them, since if left idle for too long, they disappear. This minigame's concept isn't special, but it's just fun, and maybe a little bit thrilling. Hey, not every minigame has to have a good concept, it just has to be good in some way, and Flower Shower is no exception. That's why it showers in the reign of 6th place. Fifth place is Free For All Chimp Chase. All four players are in a forest jungle, with several monkeys of different colors running around them. The players must catch these monkeys, and carry them to the bigger monkey with the same color. Doing so gives players points, and the player with the most points when time is up is the winner. The amount of monkeys is limited, so players should try to catch as many as possible before their opponents do. Also, occasionally, gold monkeys will appear. These ones can be given to any big monkey, regardless of the color, and grant three points instead of just one. This minigame is fun and thrilling, somewhat, and... Sorry, that's it. Can't say any more, except Chimp Chase chases down 5th place. Eighth place is 1v3 Mario Mechs. All four players are riding their own mech, although the lone player has a huge one, while the team players have smaller ones. All players can use their mechs to move around the arena, as well as shoot lasers, although the team players have faster movement but weaker lasers, while the lone player has slower movement but stronger lasers. They must use these lasers to shoot opponents and lower their health, and if the lone player loses all of his or her health, the team wins. However, if all team players lose all of their health, the lone player wins. And when time is up, if both the lone player and at least one team player are still standing, it's a draw. This minigame is very fun and thrilling, with an epic concept. Also, I kinda prefer to be a team player. All that is why Mario Mechs earns 8th place. Third place goes to Free For All Later Skater. All four players are competing in what looks like short track speed skating. More specifically, they're ice skating on an oval-shaped track, and the first player to complete five laps is the winner. When it comes time for them to turn, the players must do so slowly and carefully, since if they do so too abruptly or sharply, they can lose speed or even hit the wall. This minigame is just fun without that much thrill or that good a concept, since it's basically just regular short track speed skating. However, there's one particular thing that makes me love it so much. It's very similar to Mario Kart, since the controls have the players holding the A button and turning with the joystick. And as I always say, I love racing games. That's enough for Later Skater to not show up late for third place. Or skate into third place, whichever you prefer. Running up is Free For All, Frozen Frenzy. All four players are in an ice cave, with five crystals, which they must collect. They must then avoid their opponents, who can try to knock the crystals out of them by attacking them. There are also sharp ice crystals that will fall from above, and if a player touches one, he or she will drop a crystal, so I advise avoiding them, along with opponents. The player with the most crystals in hand when time is up is the winner. Players can not only run, but also jump, which will help them access crystals, along with chase and avoid opponents. This minigame is fun and very thrilling, and since, again, players can attack, it's technically a fighting one, and again, I've always loved fighting games, with no doubt at all, if you try taking second place away from Frozen Frenzy, it'll be in a frenzy. Honorable Mention Party! 15th place is 2v2, finally, banking coins. Each team is on their own platform, with a floating vase full of coins and money bags. One player must keep hitting the vase to make coins fall out, while the other collects them. Since it's a coin cache, you don't really win or lose. Your goal is to collect as many coins as possible. This one is not only fun, but also nice and simple. 
14th place is 1v3 Heat Stroke. The team players are standing atop several platforms. The lone player must knock said platforms away with a hammer, while the team players must jump to avoid being knocked away. Failing to do so results in elimination, and if no team players reach the bottom platform, the lone player wins. But if just one does, the team wins. This one is thrilling and very strategic, which is rare to see in Mario Party minigames. 13th place is Free For All Chomp Romp. Each player is in a park, with a Chain Chomp following them. They must blow whistles to lure the Chain Chomp to where they're standing, being careful to avoid obstacles, until they reach a grassy field. The first player to lure their Chain Chomp to said field wins. This one is fun and a little thrilling, with a cute concept. 12th place is Free For All Coney Island. All players have their own ice cream cone, and must use it to catch scoops of ice cream that'll fall from the sky. The player with the most scoops in their cone when time is up wins. This one is, again, fun and a little thrilling with a cute concept. However, this one's just a bit cuter. Last but not least, 11th place is Free For All Dinger Derby. There are four baseball pitching machines, and each player must hit set pitches with baseball bats. Of course. The machines will pitch the balls at varying speeds, and the player to successfully hit the most of 30 pitches wins. This one is fun and quite thrilling, and forces you to stay focused, which, again, I've always liked in Mario Party minigames. Also, baseball. Here comes number one. It's a free-for-all, once again, and that's all I got for hints. It's none other than Fish Upon a Star. All four players are on a star-shaped platform in the sky, and must try and knock their opponents off it by attacking them. However, it's nowhere near as simple as that. You're about to find out where the word fish comes from. Numerous cheap sheeps will jump around, destroying the platform piece by piece. This will keep happening, and over time, the playing field will get much smaller and smaller, making things much harder for the players. Any player to fall off the platform is eliminated, and the last one standing is the winner. As Fisticuffs goes, players can stomp, punch, and kick their way to victory. And that's pretty much all there is to gameplay. This minigame is extremely fun and thrilling, and has a very epic concept. And once again, I've always loved fighting games, especially ones with twists, like unstable platforming. With all this, it's no shocker. Fish Upon a Star is easily my number one favorite Mario Party 5 minigame of all time. I fish upon a star that you feel the same way. Heh <laughs> heh. So there you have it, my top 10 favorite Mario Party 5 minigames of all time. For more uploads like this, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, please check out my social media, all links are in the description. Thanks a lot for watching guys, see you next time. Mikoro Glyscore 472, out.